Hello, my name is Rickard, and in this tutorial, I'm going to get you familiar with the user interface for Photoshop 2023. If you're new to Photoshop, you may find that the user interface is a little bit overwhelming. There's a lot of features, a lot of tools, a lot of options. And what I want to do in this tutorial is just get you familiar with the user interface so that you understand where things are and where to look for things. I do use a sample file in this tutorial. If you want to use that as well, I have included a link to it in the description of this video. Download that, download the latest version of Photoshop, and then let's dive onto the computer. All right, so if you're brand new to Photoshop, go ahead and open the latest version of Photoshop. I'm using Adobe Photoshop 2023 for this course. This is currently, as of this recording, the very latest version of Photoshop. I'm gonna go ahead and just close this window and then I'm going to go to open and in the course assets, we're going to start with the sample file PSD. We're just going to use this as a document to help us get introduced to the Photoshop workspace. So that's the first thing I want to do in this lesson. I'm just going to show you the workspace, get you oriented with Photoshop. So you generally know where things are as we progress through the rest of the course. So first we have the application menu. This is along the top. This is where you're gonna access anything you want to do with the program or with your documents. So here you can see you have access to all your settings. And then under file, you have kind of the file open, file close, save, anything you're doing to the uh, document itself or to Photoshop as a program. So this is where you're going to place things, where you can run scripts and so forth. Now, don't bother trying to remember all the things we discuss here, because as we use individual tools or processes or filters inside Photoshop, we're going to show you exactly where those are. All right, next we have edit. This is where you're going to make any edits. So copy, paste, uh, transforms, fills, etc. Next we have image. This is where you're going to access changing the image size as well as all your color adjustment tools, which are under image adjustment. So this is where you can adjust your brightness, your curves and so forth. Next, you have layer. Layer is one of the most important aspects that differentiates Photoshop from other image editing software. Now, obviously, today there are a lot of softwares that do support layers. However, Photoshop was the first and it really is what separates Photoshop from Lightroom or other applications that you can use to adjust photos with. With layers, you have the ability to put more than one photo together, layer things up and so forth. So here you can create layers, layer mass and so forth. Next we have type. This is where all your tools for typography are. Then next we have select. This is where you're going to make selections. Now, generally when you're working in Photoshop, the first step you're going to take is making a selection. And then from there, making some change to your selection. Next, we have filters. This is where you're going to access filters to stylize or create certain visual effects on your image. Next, we have 3D. This is where the 3D tools of Photoshop exist. Now, 3D is going to be discontinued in future versions of Photoshop. So in the future, you may see this disappear or become less and less prominent. Next, we have view. So this is where you're going to make any changes to the way you are viewing your image, which is right here inside the viewport or the canvas. Next, you have plugins. And this is where you can access or add plugins to Photoshop. Then you have windows and this is all your palettes and we'll discuss those in a second, but this is where you access them, turn them on or off. And this is also where you access your workspace. Now for the purpose of this tutorial, what I want you to do is go to the essential workspace. And then just to make sure it looks the same as mine, we're going to go to reset essentials. 
So as I did that, you'll notice that my palettes on the right here changed. And now your uh, monitor or your workspace should look the same as mine. All right, finally, the last one is help. And this is where you're going to access your help. This is if you have anything that you need to figure out. Now, one good trick for help is if you can't find something in this menu, but you kind of have heard of it or you've read somewhere that it exists, what you can do here is start typing um, what it is. So let's say I wanted to access Gaussian Blur. Well, right away, it's going to show you where that is on the menu. So this is really helpful if you are don't know where to find something in your menu. Go to the help, start typing it, and Photoshop will show you where that item is nice and clearly. OK, so that's your top menu. This is referred to as either your Photoshop menu or your application menu. All right, next we have your options bar or your tool options. Now these sit right here along the top and these change depending on which tool you have selected. So for the move tool, which is the default tool in Photoshop, you'll see you have options for the move tool. You have your alignment options and so forth. Now on the right here, you have some things that will always be there regardless of what tool you have selected. This is share. This allows you to share what you're working on with other people that also have an Adobe account. You can also set it up to share to social media accounts and so forth. Next, you have the discover. This allows you to search for uh, Photoshop tools, Photoshop tutorials, and so forth. You can also even use it to search for stock. When I click on that, you'll see this discover panel open. I'm going to go ahead and close that. All right, next you have quick access to your workspaces. If I click on this, you can see my essentials workspace and the other workspaces. We're going to dive into that a little bit later in our in a future lesson. All right, on the left here, we have our tools bar. This is where you're going to access all your tools for working with your image or your documents in Photoshop. Just know that your default tool is the move tool, which is this top one. And all these are the tools we're going to cover in another lesson. But just know that this is your toolbar. It always exists on the left. You can make it two columns or one column. You can also pull it apart, but this is the best place for it. All right, next we have our canvas or our workspace. And this is where your image sits inside Photoshop. And you'll notice here that there's a tab with the name of the file. If I go to File, Open, and open a second file, let's go ahead and open this Layer Tutorial, you'll see that it now has another tab here. Let's go File, Open. We're going to open the Mass Tutorial. And you can see we have now have three tabs. We can tab through those by clicking each one. And whichever one is the active one, if I go up here and go to close, that'll close the active. I can also close all or close everything but the one that's active. You can also pull these away from the canvas if you'd like by doing this. This will just make it sit in a freestanding window that you can put anywhere on your monitor. Or if you have more than one monitor, you can pull this onto a different monitor. Also, as a general window, you can minimize it and it'll minimize down here just as any other document would. To redock this into your workspace here, what you're going to do is take it by the top bar here and just hover until you see that blue square appear and then you can let go and that will now appear with the rest of your documents. We can go ahead and just click on the X for the two others that we open. We're just going to leave the sample file PSD open. Okay, next we have the tax task bar. This is called the contextual task bar. If you go up to window, you'll see it right here, contextual task bar. If I click on that, it'll turn off. If I go up here and click on it again, 
you'll see that it turns back on. And just in case it wasn't clear already, from the Windows tool or with the Windows drop down here, you can turn on or off any of the palettes in your Photoshop workspace. So Photoshop is very adjustable or customizable. And as you work with it more, you'll find that you want ready access to certain things and you can always adjust those inside of Photoshop. All right, back to the contextual taskbar. This is something that was added in the latest version of Photoshop. So if you're using an earlier version of Photoshop, you won't find it. But just realize that all they've done is taken some of the more common tools that you're using and put them right here so that you have instant access. But you do have access to all these things in any previous version of Photoshop whether it's within a tool or up here in your application menu. Now the contextual taskbar sits directly underneath whatever it is that you're working on. So if I go into my layers palette here and kind of scroll down using the scroll bar here and select layers palette up here, you'll notice that the location and what is inside this contextual taskbar changes. So when I'm on a type tool, it's showing me the font and the type size. And now when I select a, just a normal layer, it's showing me other options. Now we're not going to discuss all the options here because as we work through our project, those are going to become quite evident. So on the right here, we have our panels. And the panels exist in two states. We can have this icon state and we can have an open state. Now, when it's an icon, you can open it and collapse it by clicking on the icon. You can also have it kind of in a permanently open state like this. But even with the permanently open state, if I go up here to these two areas, it'll collapse it into an icon state. And we can also do that here. Within the panels, you can have a panel group, which you can see here. A panel group would be a bunch of panels all within one window that you can then tab across like this. And here you can see we have three panel, panel groups all sitting within this column. Now, Photoshop allows you to have more than one column. So if I wanted to, I could create another column here with various tools, and then I could, if I wanted to, create even a third one. But you want to give the most real estate to your canvas because that's where you're going to be doing most of your work. So what we're going to do here is we're going to make some adjustments to our panel just to give us the most real estate for the things that we use the most. And when it comes to Photoshop, the things that you're going to use the most is your layers palette. So we want to give that the most room. So let's go to our properties here and we're just going to take it by the tab and drag it to this bar until we see this blue square appear and then we can let go and that'll turn it into an icon within this column. I'm going to do that to the libraries as well, as well as the adjustments, the swatches, the gradients and the patterns. And then I'm going to drag this up until my layers palette is as big as it can be. The other thing I want to do is I want to open my histogram. Now, if there is a panel that's not open, you can always access it here. You'll notice that when I open my Windows menu here, the palettes that are currently showing have a little check mark. So here you can see the colors and the layers both have check marks, as well as the application frame, which is this part up here the options, which is this part here, the tools, which is here, and the contextual taskbar, which is down here. So those are the elements that are showing. I want to show the histogram, so I'm going to click on that. You'll notice that that just appeared here. I'm going to take it by the tab and drag it into this panel group with color. And when the blue square appears, I'm going to let go. And there you go. That's given me a lot of real estate for my layers. I can now see them all. I also have the histogram here. And if I want to access the color, I can always jump to the color there. So that's how I want my palettes and my workspace set up. 
So there you have it. That is the user interface for Photoshop 2023. The next thing we're going to dive into is the tools bar. Check out that tutorial next week. Make sure you subscribe to my channel if you want to get a notification of when the new tutorial is out. Otherwise, here's some other tutorials that you can check out. And also, if you're interested in professional Photoshop training, go to Nucle.com and check out my brand new Nucle Photoshop Academy. It is all the training and resources that you need to excel in Photoshop all in one place. Check that out. Otherwise, I'll see you next week.